I just unpacked the Polar Express Berkshire with the remote and the first thing the instructions tell you to do is to remove the screw and install these triple A batteries and it tells you to only use a Phillips head screwdriver to, to remove this access door for the batteries so that's what I'll do first well I got the access door off the uh, battery compartment and the screw is in there very tightly so you got to be very careful not to strip the head of the screw what I'll do next now is put a little bit of this tacky wax on the screw thread just a very little bit to keep the uh, the screw from backing out while it's in use and in with busy hands so I'll do that next well the batteries are in and the hatch cover is reinstalled and uh, what I'll do next is uh, unpack the locomotive and put it in the cradle for uh, lubrication it looks like it only needs oil lubrication uh, no grease seems to be required so I'll do that next there is an on off switch on the remote when not in use always keep it on the off position so you don't run the uh, batteries down and when ready to use with the train to run the train switch it to on just a reminder in the rear of the locomotive or in the cab you have two switches on the left is the switch for the smoke unit you want to turn this smoke on you push the switch to the left if you want to turn the smoke unit off you push it to the right and it's important to have the switch in the right side if you don't have smoke fluid in the smoke unit it will burn out the smoke unit so when running the engine without smoke fluid the, the left hand switch should be in the right hand position or off the uh, switch on the right hand side is for the chuff or sound so if you don't want chuff you put the switch on the right and if you want this chuff sound you push the switch down on the left so the right hand switch is for the chuff and the smoke unit switch is on the left and if you don't have smoke fluid in the unit you must turn it to the right or or off or it will burn out your smoke unit just a reminder well I got the uh, locomotive the Polar Express locomotive set up in the uh, foam cradle and we're going to go over the uh, lubrication of the engine all the points are clearly marked on page 16 in the uh, manual that came with the uh, locomotive and we'll just uh, review some of this uh, first of all on the trucks you want to get a drop of oil between the axle point and the uh, truck frame and there are six points two up in the front truck and four back here so you put oil on these points just a drop you don't want to over lubricate or it'll get on the track and cause you problems now on the drive wheels you want to get a drop of oil between the hex heads and the drive rod and there's four spots here and you can use LaBelle oil or whatever you're used to and you just put a drop very sparingly and there are other places also wherever you see a, a screw head you want to just get a drop in there there's one one down here it's hard to see two three four and you want to lubricate on the inside of this too where this uh, spacer bearing is so that covers the drive wheels and you do that on both sides you want to get a drop very sparingly right uh, between the pickup roller and the frame and if you get any on the roller you got to remove it I generally just use a paper towel or maybe just a damp paper towel with some isopropyl alcohol 
to make sure I just clean it up really good. So that's uh, basically the lubrication. There's not much here to lubricate. There's no uh, gearbox on that I can see. At least didn't cover it. The gearbox is here, but there's no lubrication port for it, and it didn't mention it in the instructions. But you might want to put a drop of grease in here because this is rolling around on this uh, screw head and uh, just a little bit of grease in there would probably help that from wearing too much. So that basically covers the, uh, the lubrication part and it usually goes fairly quickly and you want to make sure you don't use too much oil, just a, just a drop at each point. So I hope that uh, covers it pretty well. And next we'll, uh, we'll take out the tender and take a look at that. Alright, I got the uh, engine and tender on the track. The tender all I had to do was oil the uh, needle points on the axles. And you can see that it has a uh, coupling here. It's a tetherless coupling. So it has the uh, coupling and the uh, electronics connection all in one. And what you do is you lift the engine up and place it on top. And now I'm going to couple it up. The instructions say to power the uh, track to 18 volts. I'm using a regular Z4000 Mike's Trainhouse transformer which is AC and the set comes with a DC transformer. I don't have uh, that. I just have the engine. I don't have the set. So what I'm going to do now is uh, try and run this engine one-handed. <laughs> I'm going to turn it on, the remote that is, turn the remote on, see if the whistle blows. It does. All aboard! And this that is the Polar Express! And that works. And now I'll try and run it. Wow, it really takes off. It's way over there already, so... What I'll do is I'll bring it back. have it on the track now and uh, powered up to 16 volts. It runs on 16 volts. All aboard! This is the Polar Express! 